Welcome back. We've got another video working on the 1910 Hendy 12 by 5 foot cone head lathe. Just a couple of photos to remind you where we started. Got the lathe apart and in on the workbench trying to get the back gear assembly off. There are a lot of taper pins that hold things together on this lathe. With the back gears off, I was uh, ready to start putting a little citrus strip on to get rid of what was left of the paint. And while that was working, I could start polishing up some of the uh, bare metal parts that were needed a little shine. And then the laborious work of getting all the grime and grit off of the parts. The spindle has a little bit of a stiffness, but it's mostly from the gears when I disengaged that uh, sliding gear that disengages the lead screw you can pull out on that little brass handle and you can disengage the lead screw when you're not feeding or threading. Uh, once that was disengaged the spindle wasn't too bad. You can see the gear teeth on this thing don't show a lot of wear. As a matter of fact they show very little wear. They're rusty and dirty but at least they're not worn out. Now here on the underside is where the magic of the Hendy threading system is. These single dog tooth clutch that slides back and forth. A, a fork goes inside that groove where my fingers are. And there's a lever on the apron that engages the forward or reverse of the lead screw so you don't have to disengage the half nuts while you're threading. Uh, it's not working very good right now. There's some galling on those shafts that I'll clean up and I'll get some better video of this later as we move along. So the, my first attempt at uh, making a pin wrench to remove those caps didn't work, so I decided I'd go with the method that I'd read about for taking apart Albrecht, Albrecht chucks um, with some aluminum plates to clamp on the bearing cap. The boring head didn't work, so I had to put the four jaw chuck on the lathe and bore a hole big enough to slide over the stuck bearing cap. So I just bolted the two parts together with some all thread and then bored them out to the right size on the lathe to fit over the bearing caps on the spindle and the cone head lathe. I used a trepanning tool to cut out the bulk of the material and then just switched over to a boring bar to get the diameter, the right diameter to fit over the bearing cap. Then it was a matter of clamping the aluminum pieces onto the bearing cap to try and get it off without making it any worse than it already was. Apparently the punch and sledgehammer method had been tried many times before which was why it was such a problem and if I'd had been smart I would have knocked the corners off of that uh, those pieces of aluminum so I could get a little better rotation before they started hitting on the bed but I wanted somewhat somewhere to pound something to pound on with the sledgehammer as you can see the uh, bearing cap was on plenty tight um, actually was worried about stripping out those the threaded rod in the aluminum I had to had to tighten it down so much to keep it from uh, spinning on the cap when I pounded on it. I was worried that it was just spinning on the cap so I marked it with a sharpie to make sure that it was all turning together but as you can see it took some serious force to get this bearing cap off. Because I made the tool the wrong shape I had to loosen it after going just a little ways each time but after some serious pounding it was finally about ready to come off. Once it finally did come off I was able to see what the problem was. The, the 
punch and hammer method had raised a pushed a little dimple down into the threads. Um, the the other side had the same treatment with the nice punch and hammer marks. So in order to clean up those dimpled areas, I had a I was trying going to try and chuck it up in the lathe, but was worried about catching those threads and they weren't getting everything concentric. Um, so I'd had a little diamond wheel, just a Harbor Freight diamond wheel that had a kind of a triangular shape to it. So I just used the drill to get in and clean up the bad spots on the threads. And it uh, worked, right, worked quite well. I was able to get both sides cleaned up and freed up. As you can see, there's just kind of a little uh, triangular profile to that diamond wheel. With the caps off, I realized there's no way I was going to be able to leave them looking like that and put them back on the lathe. So decided I would try my hand at some uh, brazing using the TIG instead of the uh, oxyacetylene setup. So um, after cleaning it out as best I could, um, set it up on the welding table and got the silicon bronze rod out to uh, try and fill it in using the TIG torch this time. As usual, it was my first time doing brazing with TIG, so I put a little preheat on the part and then uh, started working on filling in those giant holes. And it actually went real well. I think it's actually quite a bit easier than the brazing with the oxyacetylene set up, I think, uh, in the future. This will be my the way I do it. So after filling in one hole, I'd roll the part around and clamp it with the next hole up. Uh, once, once I started welding on it, I didn't need any preheat anymore because the heat spread around the part pretty good. After getting the, getting the brazing done, I decided I'd turn them down on the lathe to smooth them back out. I put some dowel pins under the jaws to, to bring the part out where I could turn all the way to the edge and went ahead and just skimmed down that outer diameter to clean up all the chowder marks and my brazing buildup that I'd put on it. And the parts had it, there was enough uh, thickness on them, I felt like it wasn't going to be a problem to turn them down a little bit. I had to make a few passes to clean them up, and then I just skimmed off the face and gave them a little quick polish with the Scotch Bright and ended up with a pretty nice looking part. Um, there's a few, you can see a few small voids where I didn't get the silicon braze in perfectly. I wish I would have done it hair better, but it sure looks a lot better than it did. And you on a couple of the repairs you can't even tell where where the brazing where the holes were. So this is the final product on the headstock. I've almost got the headstock ready for paint. And here's the bearing caps back in place. Just testing them out and see what they look like quite happy with how they turned out. As you can see, there's a little holiday on the one on the left, but you know, they look a lot better than they did. And uh, here's what we started with. So pretty happy how they turned out. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one.